Welcome to the Ordinary People's Story Club. After my boyfriend died, I lay down on his best friend's bed, the person who killed my boyfriend. He held me, kissed me, while I forced a smile, feeling like I was dying every moment. I didn't freak out, continued to play the role of his obedient lover, because I needed to plan how to make him pay for what he did. At 23, my boyfriend from university passed away. We had even met each other's parents. Last year, when we traveled together, he proposed to me on a mountaintop. I said yes. But then he disappeared. After his death, I continued to live in the house we rented together. It was spacious, with two floors totaling over 170 square meters. Though empty, with only our border collie named Duo Duo and the traces left by my boyfriend, it made me feel safe. Living here sometimes made me feel like he was still around. So, no matter how much my parents urged me to, I didn't move out. On my 24th birthday, I returned from a business trip and lied to my parents on the phone, saying I had plans with friends. Then I texted the familiar bakery to order a small fruit cake for myself. It was my boyfriend's favorite. The bakery was managed by a pastry chef, a man under 30, dark-skinned, muscular, but skilled. I ordered a small fruit cake, thanks. Happy birthday, he said. How did you know? I replied, but he just chuckled without answering. After hanging up, I felt a bit uneasy, but didn't dwell on it. Shortly after, it started pouring outside, thunder roaring. It was pitch black outside, each lightning strike seemed sinister. I felt scared, so I cuddled with Duo Duo, waiting for the cake and watching a movie. Suddenly, the whole house went dark. The power was out. I turned on my phone's flashlight but stayed still, holding on to the dog. Then, there was a heavy knock at the door. Duo Duo dashed toward it, barking furiously. Who's there? I asked from the door. Your cake, came the reply. I breathed a sigh of relief. It was the pastry chef's voice. I locked the dog in the kitchen, then cautiously opened the door to receive the cake. But it felt heavier than expected. I only ordered a small one, I said. It's your birthday, he replied. I laughed, saying it would make me gain weight. He quickly fixed the power outage. I noticed he was completely soaked. I'm sorry for the trouble, I said. He glanced at the kitchen where my dog was still barking. Not a problem, he said, then looked at me. It's raining heavily outside, he stepped closer, blocking the doorway. I felt a bit uneasy but tried to remain calm. Can I lend you an umbrella? Or call a cab? I offered. Instead of accepting, he said, do you believe in love at first sight, Xiaochen? I was startled. How did he know my name? What are you trying to say? I replied. I fell for you at first sight, since you first came to the shop, he said, staring at me strangely. Before I could respond, his gentle expression turned cold. You. Have a boyfriend? He asked. Yes, he's at work and will be back soon, I lied, forcing a smile. So, Mr. Xu, you should leave now to avoid any misunderstandings when he returns. The house was filled with traces of my boyfriend, including his men's slippers at the door. And my boyfriend had visited his shop. So, my explanation should be believable. But. Why? He questioned. Why lie to me? I denied it, but he mentioned something that made my blood run cold. At the beginning of the year, you took this cake to the cemetery. Whose grave was it? How did he know all this? We had only communicated about orders and payments via WeChat. I never mentioned my boyfriend's death on social media. Realizing he knew too much, I rushed to the kitchen to let Duo Duo out. She was my only protection. But as soon as I touched the doorknob, he grabbed my clothes and flung me backward. I fell to the ground. He then sat on me, covering my mouth with a towel that smelled strange, probably drugged. I struggled to hold my breath, trying to break free. But he pinned my arms with one hand, sitting firmly on my waist. Soon, I began feeling dizzy after inhaling the drugged air. Unlike in movies, it took a long time for the drug to take effect, but eventually, I started feeling faint. 
During this time, countless terrifying thoughts raced through my mind. I was extremely scared, starting to sob, tears rolling down my cheeks. He stared at me, dead set on me at my most fearful moment, even with a sinister smile. I understood his gaze. It was madness. When I woke up, I was sitting on the couch. The lights were bright, and there was a fruitcake on the coffee table with candles already lit. Shu Hu had disappeared. I stood up, intending to quietly leave the house, but as soon as I took a step, I stumbled and fell to the ground. I looked down and saw my hands and feet bound together. I struggled but couldn't break free. Lying on the ground, I couldn't even get up. Terrified, tears streamed down my face uncontrollably. Then I heard the sliding door to the kitchen open, followed by Shu Hu's heavy footsteps. He hurried over, helping me up, asking if I was okay. I cried, pleading, saying I would give him all my money if he let me go. Please, I begged. He chuckled and said he didn't want money. And I won't let you go, he added. My tears still flowed, and at that moment, through the crack in the kitchen door, I saw Duo Duo. She was lying on the ground, her chest barely moving, almost imperceptible. And only then did I notice the man holding a sharp knife. My head throbbed with pain. What did you do to Duo Duo? What did you do to her? He glanced back, just sedated her, otherwise she'd be too noisy. She's not dead. He said calmly, Xiao Chen, as long as you cooperate, I won't hurt you. He smiled as if coaxing a child. Just be obedient. He then sat next to me, cutting a large piece of cake and holding it in front of me. Ah, he motioned for me to open my mouth. I obediently complied, watching as the blade slowly pushed the cake into my mouth, mixed with my own tears. Good girl, he said. He fetched red wine and glasses from the kitchen, and we drank together. He let me lie on his lap as we watched a movie. He told me he had been secretly in love with me for two years. His hand kept stroking my hair, smooth and creepy, disgusting. So, do you know how happy I was that day when I found out that man died? I felt like it was destiny giving you to me. I thought of my boyfriend again. When he proposed on the mountaintop, he said he would always protect me. He broke his promise. He broke his promise and now there was no one to protect me. Have a little more to drink, I said. More? He asked. Yes. Shu Hu was pleased and poured more wine. He helped me drink a glass, then drank one himself. I want more. I deliberately let a drop of wine trickle from the corner of my mouth, deliberately wiped it away with my tongue, deliberately let my hair stick to my cheek, deliberately looked at him with a blurred gaze. We should drink more. He began to comply, pouring one glass after another. I thought he might know a lot about me, but he probably didn't know how much I had been drinking alone for the past six months after my boyfriend's death. I couldn't get myself drunk anymore. He drank a few more glasses than me, and by two in the morning, he finally fell asleep. Meanwhile, I used my bound hands to pick up the sharp knife and cut the rope between my hands and feet in the gap of a few millimeters. Luckily, the knife was sharp, and I managed to cut the ropes in ten minutes. I turned around to grab my phone to call the police. I hadn't touched the phone since I got home, so it should still be in my bag. But the phone was nowhere to be found. Looking for this? I suddenly turned around. I saw the man holding my phone, shaking it in his hand. Although I had been tricked by him, fortunately, where I stood now, only one step away from the door, was closer to the door than him. Escaping would be better than anything. After screaming in fright, I immediately rushed to the door, trying to turn the lock. But he was faster. Like a shadow, he rushed from the sofa to the door, taking only an instant. As I opened the door, he grabbed my hair with one hand and held the sharp knife in the other. I was in pain and fear again, screaming frantically. At that moment, there was a loud bark. It was Duo Duo. I didn't know when she woke up, but she dashed out from around the corner and bit the man's arm. He winced in pain, letting go of my hair. 
But Duo Duo held on firmly. I broke free and rushed out the door, leaning against the doorframe, shouting, Duo Duo. She had to come with me. But when I turned back, I saw that the man had already stabbed the sharp knife into Duo Duo's belly. Blood gushed out, covering a large area on the floor. But Duo Duo still didn't let go of the man's hand. No matter how he struggled, how he moved the knife. And Duo Duo's eyes kept looking at me. There were tears in her eyes. Human-like tears. You have to live well, I heard my boyfriend's words before he died. I can't be with you, but you have to live on. I slammed the door shut, wanting to knock on the neighbor's door, but immediately realized that the neighbor's door was still closed, and I might fall into the clutches of evil again. So I turned and ran out of the building, running towards the deserted street in the middle of the night. The rain poured down, soaking my entire body in a few seconds. But I was grateful for this rain. With such low visibility, as long as I ran a few hundred meters, he wouldn't be able to find me. As long as I found someone to help me call the police. However, the security room in the residential area was empty, and all the shops outside the residential area were closed. On the suburban roads, there was only the dim yellow light emitted by the street lamps. Under the curtain of rain, sporadic cars zoomed past. I waved and shouted, but no one stopped for me. I couldn't afford to linger. I knew the man would catch up with me soon. So, I ran along the road, finally seeing a gas station with lights on a few hundred meters away. I knew that was the only lifeline on this rainy night. Rain water kept rushing into my nostrils with each breath, making me choke every few breaths. I was wearing a nightgown barefoot. The water rose above my ankles, and the occasional stones I stepped on caused piercing pain. My soaked clothes were icy cold. But I couldn't care less. I ran as fast as I could. 300 meters, 200 meters, 100 meters, 50 meters. I finally rushed into the convenience store at the gas station and collapsed to the ground with a thud. The female cashier, wearing work clothes, was startled to see me. I pleaded, help me, someone is tracking me, please, help me. I hid in the warehouse of the convenience store. It was warm there. Meanwhile, the cashier hurriedly called the police. I knew I was safe now. Several hundred meters away, through the rain and the darkness, he wouldn't be able to find me anymore. Thinking about this, I felt that the warehouse was the warmest place I had ever been. It even made me feel a little sleepy. However, two minutes later, I heard the welcoming voice of the convenience store's announcement system again, and someone else came in. Fill up to 95, add 200, it was the man's voice. He drove here. Yes, he could drive and would chase after me. And this gas station was the nearest place where I could call for help. He was sure to come. What are you looking for? The female cashier asked. I heard the man pacing between the shelves. He was looking for me. Do you have band aids here? The man inquired. In the back two rows, on the right, the cashier replied. Okay, thank you, the man's footsteps sounded again, getting closer and closer to the warehouse door. I dared not breathe, only covering my mouth, shedding tears silently. His footsteps grew louder and louder. When he reached the warehouse door, suddenly, he stopped. For a long time, he didn't move. I felt like he could open the door any time. Haven't found it? The cashier's voice broke the silence. No, it seems like there's a leak in your warehouse, the man said. That was the rain water from my body. I had been drenched for too long, and the water was still flowing down, spreading. It had even flowed out from under the warehouse door. Oh, it's okay. I'll fix it later. Thank you, the cashier said. Yeah, the man's footsteps started again, gradually moving away. But this store was too quiet, suffocatingly quiet. I could clearly hear him putting things on the checkout counter, the cashier scanning them with a laser, and pressing the keyboard. 16. Yun. Are you buying so many band aids? The cashier asked. He nodded, my dog bit me. Oh ouch, that sounds serious. 
The cashier seemed to have noticed the wound. I need to go to the hospital for this, the man said. Then, hurry up. You might need several shots, the cashier replied. The man chuckled, and his footsteps sounded again. Then, there was the automatic playback voice welcoming customers at the supermarket entrance. He opened the door. He was leaving. Hey, wait a minute. The cashier's voice stopped him. What's up? The man asked. I, I didn't want to bother you, especially since you're injured. The cashier said. The man chuckled softly. It's okay, tell me. Could you stay with us a little longer? Us? Yes, a little girl was just chased by a pervert and came here to hide. A pervert? Yeah. Haven't you called the police? We did, but they haven't arrived yet. They should be here in a few minutes. Could you stay with us for a few more minutes? Sure. Thank you so much. By the way, should I refund your money? No need. Oh, by the way, do you have coke here? I'll get it for you. Thanks a lot. Footsteps and heavier footsteps. The refrigerator door opened. Suddenly, there was a dull thud, the sound of a body falling to the ground. Then, footsteps, the man's footsteps, calm and steady, getting closer and closer. The warehouse door opened. I was tied up again, hands and feet, mouth taped shut, and stuffed into the trunk of a car. I kept bouncing around in the car. I knew the car was heading towards my home. It was my home, but I was sure that going back would turn it into my prison again. In despair, I suddenly heard a police siren. Meanwhile, the car began to slow down. I had to let the police know I was here. I began to kick the trunk frantically. But my hands and feet were tied up, lying sideways in the trunk, unable to exert force upwards. I could only use my feet to kick the edge of the trunk. The car slowly came to a stop, but at this moment, the trunk was filled with loud music. It was that man, using music to cover up my sounds. I heard the police shouting and talking to the man on the other side, mixed with the sound of rain hitting the car body and the sentences of rock music. I tried to shake the car, but obviously, the magnitude was not enough to attract the attention of the police. Half a minute later, the car started again. The sound of the police sirens gradually faded away. When the trunk opened again, I saw that man's sinister and terrifying face. You're all wet. Let me help you take a shower and change your clothes, he said. He pushed me into the bathtub and washed me with the shower head. Mud mixed with tears slid off my body, flowing little by little into the drain. The floor of the bathroom was filthy, with large clumps of dog hair in the corners. I thought those must be from Duo Duo. This time, he didn't tie my hands and feet. Even he understood that I didn't dare to resist at all. He stopped the shower and took out a first aid kit. Dipping a cotton swab into the red antiseptic, he held my ankle with his other hand and lifted it up to inspect the wound closely. Then, he applied the antiseptic with force, causing a sharp sting when the cotton swab touched the wound. Instinctively, I recoiled my foot. Don't move, he said, your feet are very pretty. After a while, we'll go inside. You'll put on makeup, and I'll help you change your clothes. Do you have a white dress, backless, and one piece? I like white, he continued, fixating on my feet, his eyes gleaming with something terrifying. After changing, we'll celebrate our birthdays together. And then I'll confess my feelings to you. I didn't behave well just now, but this time, I'll confess again. This time, you have to agree. In this moment, I couldn't even summon anger. Only fear. I trembled all over, unable to utter a word, let alone refuse. Death seemed preferable. In that bathtub, this thought became clearer and clearer. Death seemed preferable. Suddenly, I heard the sound of keys turning in the door outside the living room. It was the most reassuring sound I had heard all night. It was Zhao Zhe. I often went on business trips, and before Duo Duo, it was my boyfriend who took care of everything. After he passed away, Zhao Zhe, our university classmate, became the person I trusted the most in this city.
He was silent, honest, and treated both my boyfriend and me very well. My boyfriend had once suspected that Zhao Zhe liked me, but Zhao Zhe had never shown any signs of it, so that suspicion faded on its own. After my boyfriend passed away, I entrusted him with the task of feeding Duo Duo during my business trips. He would come to my house every morning before going to work to clean up after Duo Duo, replenish water and dog food. I forgot to inform him this time, but it was still too early for him to come, as it was only around 5 in the morning. After the door lock turned, I heard footsteps on the floor. Duo Duo? I'm here, Duo Duo. Hearing Zhao Zhe calling Duo Duo, my heart shattered. In the bathroom, the man also became alert. He slowly raised one hand and pressed it against my neck. If I made a sound, he would suffocate me. Both of us silently listened to the movements outside the house. Where did you go, Duo Duo? Still sleeping? Zhao Zhe paced around the room, going upstairs and then coming back downstairs. Uncle Zhao got up early today to give you a bath. His tone was as calm and indifferent as usual. It sounded very reassuring. The footsteps approached closer and closer. Playing in the bathroom again? Zhao Zhe suddenly asked. A sentence that filled me with joy. Because Duo Duo never played in the water. Why would he ask this? He was saying it for me to hear. So, Zhao Zhe knew something was wrong in the house. Zhao Zhe's footsteps got closer and closer. Meanwhile, Xu Hu also picked up the knife beside him. He gestured for me to stand up, and with one hand, he slowly lifted me out of the bathtub, his other arm holding me tightly. His arm was as thick and sturdy as an iron bolt, and it tightened around me more and more, allowing me only a hint of breath. He held me like this, slowly moving towards the door. And it seemed like Zhao Zhe had also reached this point. Duo Duo? He called softly and turned the knob. Then, the door opened with abnormal speed. In that instant, Shu Hu instantly let go of me and, at the same time, stabbed the knife toward the outside. I was thrown to the ground but saw. Shu Hu's knife missed its target. From my perspective, the area outside the door was empty. Suddenly, Zhao Zhe pounced from the side of the door, knocking Shu Hu out of my view. I got up from the ground and ran out of the door. I saw Zhao Zhe pushing Shu Hu down and grabbing his neck with his hands. But he was too weak. Shu Hu kicked his feet and easily overturned Zhao Zhe to the ground. Then Shu Hu quickly got up and began kicking Zhao Zhe, who was curled up on the ground. He leaned against the wall with both hands, each kick lifting high, using all his strength to stomp down. And with each kick, it landed on Zhao Zhe's ribs. I was stunned for a moment, watching Zhao Zhe being kicked two or three times before I came to my senses and realized that the knife Shu who had dropped earlier was not far away. I quickly ran over and picked up the knife. Strangely, it was a western-style meat cleaver from my house. But now, holding it with both hands, my whole body trembled. Stop! I shouted loudly. But Xu Hu continued to rage, cursing, and every kick landed heavily on Zhao Zhe's body. I swung the knife in the air twice, raising my voice. Stop it! Xu Hu finally stopped. He panted, wiped the sweat from his face, and pointed to Zhao Zhe, asking me, Xiao Chen, who is he? My friend! Your friend? He's not like you. You don't understand. You don't understand the way men look at you. He stepped out of the shadows, glanced at the knife in my hand and asked, Why are you holding a knife at me? He raised his head, straightened his body and looked down at me from above. I made dessert for you, helped you bathe, treated your wounds and you're holding a knife against me? In an instant, his eyes filled with ferocity. You're holding a knife against me? All for this person? His voice became unusually sharp. Xiao Chen, I just want to treat you well, I really do. He rushed towards me, grabbed my hair, and dragged me into the living room. Suddenly, he stopped in his tracks. Because I had plunged the knife into his thigh. But he just stopped, said nothing, grabbed the handle of the knife, and pulled it out directly. 
Blood spurted out, splashing onto my face. Then he pulled me up by my hair, his other bloody hand raised high, and slapped me across the face with immense force. The impact sent me sprawling to the ground. The knife fell. I reached out to grab it, but he stomped on my hand with his foot. I couldn't help it. I screamed. Then I saw him pick up the knife, crouch down, and press the blade against my face. I'll ask you one last time, his eyes had turned crimson, will you be with me? I could feel the pain growing on my face. Say it? I was terrified. I feared that if I didn't agree, my entire face would be ruined. But if I did agree, then what? Who knew what he would do? Say it! The pain grew sharper and sharper, and a warm drop of liquid had already flowed from my cheek to my chin. Say something! Screw you! Suddenly, I heard a low growl. Xu Hu turned his head, and Zhao Zhe had picked up a golf club and hit Xu Hu on the head. Xu Hu immediately fell. Then Zhao Zhe straddled Xu Hu, lifted the club, and struck Xu Hu's head repeatedly. Xu Hu tried to grab Zhao Zhe's hands, but after two heavy blows, his hands lost all strength. And Zhao Zhe's club continued to strike. Xu Hu's expression had stiffened, lying on the ground, eyes wide open, his head rolling with each blow and then returning to its original position. Like he was dead. I instinctively wanted to hold Zhao Zhe back to prevent any fatalities. But just as I was about to speak, I stopped myself. I actually hoped Zhao Zhe would continue. Thud. 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 I seemed to be immersed in the sound. But neither Zhao Zhe nor I noticed that Xu Hu's other hand was still clutching a knife. He hadn't let go yet. I only saw a flash of light pass by, and then Zhao Zhe grunted, clutching his stomach, the club slipping from his hand as it reached its highest point. Then, I clearly heard two more sounds, the sound of the knife piercing flesh. Short, but powerful. Zhao Zhe fell sideways to the ground. Facing away from me, between Xu Hu and me. After a moment of silence, I saw Xu Hu, slowly standing up from behind Zhao Zhe. He was tall. So tall that he blocked the light from the living room when he stood up straight. He stepped forward like a beast. Suddenly, he stumbled. It was Zhao Zhe, who had grabbed his ankles with both arms. Go! Xiao Qin! Go! Xu Hu's knife fell toward Zhao Zhe again. But this time, it hit Zhao Zhe's lower abdomen. In an instant, Zhao Zhe let go of Xu Hu's foot, grabbed Xu Hu's hand holding the knife. Go, go! Zhao Zhe shouted loudly, without any other words. But, why did it have to be like this? After the car flipped, my boyfriend was trapped in the cockpit, telling me to go. I left, and the car caught fire as soon as I left. And Duo Duo, biting Xu Hu's arm. I left too, and now I can't even find Duo Duo's body. Why? Why do I have to go alone? I looked around and saw the severed ropes on the carpet that I had cut. I grabbed one, wound it around both hands several times. Then I lunged at Xu Hu. I didn't want to leave any more. The rope tightened around Xu Hu's throat. And his knife was being held back by Zhao Zhe with all his strength. Xu Hu couldn't breathe, and his only free hand tried to grab me from behind, but it could only wave helplessly, and the biggest threat it posed was just pulling a strand of my hair. But he still stubbornly twisted his body, trying to shake me off his back. His strength was formidable. Just swinging from side to side made my arms ache unbearably, and my palms were bleeding from the rope. And the most dangerous thing was Zhao Zhe. The blood under him had spread into a pool, and it was still expanding. Now, I could only hope that Xu Hu would suffocate and pass out before Zhao Zhe lost too much blood and strength. 10 seconds. 20 seconds. 30 seconds. After that, I lost track of time. I only remembered that when Xu Hu fell, I cried again, uncontrollably, silently. Through tears, I saw Zhao Zhe smile at me. That was the warmest thing all night. That night, I tied Xu Hu up, used Zhao Zhe's phone to call the police, and called 120. 
Xu Hu was swiftly convicted of multiple crimes. He had no family, and he didn't appeal. Duo Duo's body was found in the freezer and buried on a hillside in the suburbs. And Zhao Zhe lay in the hospital for two months. Fortunately, none of the knife wounds had hit any vital organs. But because his intestines were damaged, he had to eat liquid food all the time. I had been to Guangdong and knew that they made delicious porridge there, so I learned how to make it and would bring it to the hospital when I wasn't flying. That night, the moon was full, and I went to the hospital to see him. We took a walk in the hospital courtyard together. He said that he had actually been interested in me all these years, but I was my brother's girlfriend after all. I knew what he was going to say. The time we spent together in the hospital, I understood his feelings. I know you might think that agreeing to me would be a betrayal to him, Zhao Zhe's voice was heavy and gentle, but why not look at it from a different perspective? Look at it from a different perspective? I replied. He chuckled softly. Look at it from a different perspective. I'm the next one to protect you. I'll think about it, I said, unable to suppress the curve of my lips. Let me think about it. After Zhao Zhe was discharged from the hospital, I finally moved out of that house and into Zhao Zhe's home. He cooked a table full of dishes, even though he could barely hold the pot with one hand due to his injury. But he wouldn't let me help. The dishes tasted heavier than his brother's, but they were still delicious. That night, for the first time, I lay on his bed. We were both reserved, lying straight, and soon fell into a deep sleep. Then I had a strange dream. It was my deceased boyfriend. He yelled, Go! Go! I woke up, drenched in cold sweat, my head throbbing unbearably. It was another migraine, but I hadn't brought any painkillers with me. Zhao Zhe was sleeping soundly, so I had to get up and walk to the living room by myself. But I couldn't find any medication. Instead, I found a stack of photos in the drawer under the TV. They were my photos. Intimate photos. Photos of me taken when I was alone at home. There were photos of the living room, the bedroom, the bathroom. And photos of me tied up by Shu Hu. Where did these photos come from? Suddenly, I remembered what Shu Hu had said. Your friend? You're wrong, Xiao Chen. He's just like me. You don't understand. You don't understand the way men look at you. The pain in my head intensified. It felt like a drill was boring into my temples. I understood. I understood everything. From the photos, it seemed that Zhao Zhe had installed cameras in many corners of my house. That's why Zhao Zhe knew when something happened at my house. That's why Xu Hu said during police interrogation that someone had provided him with all the information about me. Wait. Was that all? No, there was one more thing. My boyfriend's death. Xiao Qin. From the bedroom came Zhao Zhi's soft call. Still that gentle voice. Where are you? I put the photos back in place and closed the drawer. Nothing, I just went to the bathroom. I took a few deep breaths, calmed my mind, and returned to his bed. He rolled over and hugged me. At that moment, I suddenly felt that his hands were even more disgusting than Shu Hu's. But I couldn't lose my temper. I needed to figure everything out. I needed to make every person who had hurt me pay. The next three days were the most agonizing days of my life. Living with enemies, putting on a fake smile, even hugging. Every moment felt like hell. Fortunately, within three days, I found a lot of crucial information. Only the final confirmation was missing. And this confirmation required me to force the truth out of Zhao Zhe. At two o'clock in the morning on the fourth day, I turned on the bedroom light. I poured a cup of boiling water onto Zhao Zhe's chest. He woke up, screaming in agony, only to realize that his hands and feet were already tied up. Don't struggle, these binding techniques used by Xu Hu are unbreakable, I said. Xiao Qin, what are you doing? He looked at me in horror. What are you doing? I have a few questions for you. Untie me first and I'll tell you everything. I shook my head with a smile. 
No, you've killed someone after all. I... I killed someone? He forced out a smile. Shu Hu, isn't he still alive? But my boyfriend is dead. I had intended to maintain a cold-blooded demeanor, but when I mentioned my boyfriend, my throat still choked up. He's dead. What does that have to do with me? He shouted. I took out my phone and played a video. It was a video of Shu Hu holding me captive. Photos, videos, you really enjoy spying on me, Zhao Zhe? I sneered. You installed over a dozen cameras in my house, Zhao Zhe, over a dozen. So what? He finally panicked. If it weren't for those cameras, how could I have saved you that night? Yes, you saved me and got injured for me. I took a deep breath. But, wasn't it you who leaked my information to Shu Hu? Including my name, my birthday, when I went on business trips, when I came back, and even the address of my boyfriend's grave. All of this, isn't it all you're doing? Playing the hero, Zhao Zhe, it must have felt great, right? I bent down and pulled out the golf club that had been hidden under the bed. It was the one Zhao Zhe had used that night, and it was also my boyfriend's favorite. Sometimes I felt like this golf club had been protecting me all along. And now, I held it in my hand. From now on, you answer my questions, or I'll break your legs. I raised the golf club high and said, What were you doing from November the 3rd to 14th last year? Xiao Chen, it's been so long, who remembers that? I shook my head, wrong answer. The club came down, smashing straight into his shin. I waited for a while. Growing impatient, he finally stopped screaming. I'll ask again, Zhao Zhe, on November the 16th last year, my boyfriend's car caught fire due to the battery, and on November the 3rd, you borrowed that car. I was just borrowing the car, I always borrow his car, he said with a sob, explaining frantically. Yes, but every time before, you were traveling or on a business trip. I had someone check your records. For those 11 days, you didn't stay at any hotel out of town. So, what were you doing for 11 days? He dared not speak. Zhao Zhe, it's still the same question. What were you doing from November the 3rd to 14th last year? 3. 2. 1. He remained silent, so the club fell on his broken leg again. I'll kill you. I'll kill you, Gu Chen. Speak up. Say what you did. Say you tampered with the battery. Yes. So what? I wanted to kill your man, what of it? I wanted to play with his women, sleep with his women. My boyfriend treated you like a brother. Do you know how he mocked me in college? Do you know how many pranks he played on me? Just because of pranks? Do you know what those pranks were? Do you know how humiliating they were? With his good family background and good looks, he could make everyone like him just by inviting roommates to dinner, and he'd come along to bully me. Isolate me. Do you understand? But after he graduated, he was always helping you. I don't want his charity. I want him to atone. So you killed him? Is that it? So you killed him? I tampered with that battery. I just wanted to burn him. Who knew he'd be trapped in the car? You've admitted it. What? You admitted it. All of this was done by you. I slowly walked to the table, placed my left arm on the edge, took the golf club, and swung it with all my might. Pain surged through, mixed with the brittle sound of bones and tendons. I knew my left hand should be broken. What? What are you doing? Zhao Zhe looked at me puzzled. I endured the pain and threw the club to Zhao Zhe. He instinctively held the club in his hand. Now the club had his fingerprints on it. The events of tonight are like this, I said slowly, organizing my thoughts, you and I were lying in bed, chatting, and you let slip, and I saw through all your plans. I walked to the corner of the room and squatted down, you were furious and broke my arm with the club. In the struggle, I managed to take the club from you. I broke your leg. To prevent you from attacking me again, I tied you up. What are you talking about, Xiao Chen? I hugged my legs tightly, took out my phone, checked the time they should be here. 
suddenly there was a dull sound, and the door was kicked open. It was the police. I suddenly burst into tears. Save me! I shouted, tears rolling down my cheeks, a long-anticipated emotional release. Save me! He killed someone. He killed someone. On the morning of Zhao Zhe's conviction, I went to my boyfriend's grave. I told him two things. From now on, I'll be the one making cakes for you. And no one will bully me again.